Thank you, Sister Aru, for that wonderful item of ministry in music. You know, one of the things among many that um, I believe is responsible for my strong Christian grounding as a young adult male. I remember growing up and randomly my mom used to be singing in the house. That was one of the songs she sang from time to time. Good Christian music. It's good to be with you again. Um, happy to see all of you who are here. I was thrilled to see some of the Mongdo folk last evening when we kicked off the sunlight gospel explosion. I, I hope to see more though. Of course, some of those who were there were volunteers. So they were there in the capacity of functioning or serving in the experience. I saw a couple others. I even saw one or two of the members with visitors. And that to me is gold star attendance. That's how you come to a crusade or an evangelistic series, which is the preferred term. That's how you come, with people, to hear the word of God. So I commend those who would have done so, and I wish to remind you that we are well on the way. We continue this evening at 6.45. Tomorrow, Sunday evening at 6.45. We rest on Monday. Tuesday, we will be there at... That's right. And Wednesday, you will be there at? Right. You have so promised in the house of God. Amen. Wonderful. So we look forward to your support and bringing the folk. I am advised that, um, well, of course, priority is always given to our guests, but we have a transportation service. Service, servicing the Mondo area. If you wish to have guests um, to be shuttled to and from the Shazando Pan Yard using that service, you can speak with Elder Brewster Joseph or Elder Dylan Monroe. Right? So we are ready we are geared up we are firing on all cylinders i was really happy i must say about the representation of mongdo church at the convention last week it was strong and i felt proud to be the pastor we had a good representation and i am happy that you came out and therefore it inspired me with courage that you know, when we kick off the Sunlight Gospel Explosion, I would see that um, level of support. So I put last night behind me. And so I'm looking forward to this week to see that support for the work of God. Let me tell you that today is an extremely packed day. It's from one thing to another, but amidst all that is happening today, the highlight of the day for me is what transpires immediately after this midday service, and that is the baptismal service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, to me, is the highlight of the day. I'm looking forward to it. We have two persons who would be going all the way with Jesus, in baptism what do you say yeah that's what the church is about that's what the mission of the church is if the if the lord is not adding to the church such as should be saved the church is dying and i, I don't intend to pastor a dying church all right so we intend to be growing and we are excited about this and those who would be added in April through the evangelistic series and going forward. Of course, next Sabbath, we kick off our augmented outreach, our evangelism, and we expect that 
um, a lot more than usually turn up at eight because I admit that that that's a bit early. That's a bit early. Uh, we expect more persons, many more, triple, quadruple, and more the amount of persons that turn up at 8 to be here just before 9 a.m. next Sabbath where we put some boots on the ground in the community. What do you say? All right. If you're not saying amen now, just listen to the, the message. And you will say amen after. All right. Praise the Lord. Allow me to ask you this question, or these couple of questions. In your experience as a human being on this earth, I trust I'm talking to human beings here. To see if you're not a human being, raise your hand. But I wouldn't do that. It may cause some panic in the congregation. Have mercy. In your experience as a human being, how many of you agree that salt is important. Well, some people put up their hand real quick, boy. I'll check your blood pressure after the service. Have mercy. But we agree that salt is important, right? Anyone has not had an encounter with salt in their life, in their human experience? You, have never, you don't know what salt is? You have no idea what is the pur purpose of salt? Right, even the children know about salt. Similarly, in your experience sojourning on this earth, this planet called earth, what are your thoughts about light? Is light important? Yes? How many of you see the usefulness of light? Yes. Good. Right now we are uh, utilizing it. Light is important by your own admission and so is salt. And so we're going to have a little discussion on this. Some, <laughs> some of these statements may seem very profound, but I assure you it's quite simple. We're going to Look at what Jesus said and, and maybe help us to understand why he said it. So I've captioned this discourse. We are about to engage in the challenge. Whose fault is it anyway? You're going to answer that question. Whose fault is it anyway? Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, this is your time. Your time to speak your word to your people, the waiting congregation. So Lord, simply use me as a nail, as it were, upon which you hang the wonderful portrait of Jesus the Christ. That those who are here, even those online, would look upon him, look into his wonderful face and live and find salvation, understand the commission and walk by the tenets of your word. Speak to your people and disappoint us not, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. I was tempted, I must let you know, to title the sermon Matthew 2 Saturday Part 2. Uh, because I'm so excited about that concept. And I wanted to ask you if you remembered what it was. I dare say if nobody remembers, I walk off the pulpit right now because I don't know what would be going on. What is Matthew 2 Saturday all about? Anyone? Matthew 2 Saturday. What? What is Matthew 2 Saturday? We had a whole long conversation about that. Was it last month, I believe? Yeah? What is Matthew 2 Saturday? Wait, let me take up my Bible, man. I mean, what, what is Matthew 2 Saturday? What is that about? Yes, my brother. No. It is most certainly not. 
What is it about? I'm looking for one word. You don't even have to give me the whole two word phrase. Huh? I'm hearing the word. Woo. Bible is safe, boy. You can remain on the, plot, the podium. I'm hearing the word. Yes, Matthew 2.30 is the command given by Jesus. I would encourage you, you would do well as a Seventh-day Adventist Christian to remember it. That is the commission of your boss and mine, the Lord Jesus Christ. He told his disciples, Matthew 2.30. It means, it's a command, make disciples. You would do well not to forget it. That is your purpose here in Mongdo. If you remember that every day, the church would do well for your remembering it and putting it into action. But I decided not to go with Matthew 2, Saturday part 2. So whose fault is it anyway? Now the interesting thing about salt, I've come to understand, is that salt has a long and illustrious history in the existence of mankind. In fact, salt has been used for thousands of years. Men have been using salt to better the human experience. Salt was used in the Far East, in the Asian regions, the Oriental regions for millennia for the purposes of purification, preservation, and flavoring. And we're going to explore these. In fact, I understand that salt, the Latin of which is sal, and also the Spanish, my brother who's interested in Spanish, sal, from this Latin salt, sal, we get two words. One is salary, and the, under, the other is salad. I don't know which you think is more important. I will leave that up to you. But in the, the ancient Roman times, as they were transitioning from the Greek Empire to the Roman, the Roman soldiers used to receive a ration of salt. Imagine that. Salt was important to Lalian. Soldiers, as part of their payment for service to the Roman Empire, were issued a ration of salt. And it was called salarium agentum. And it is from that term we get salary today. So when you get your salary, or you just got it last week, this week, sometime, you will remember salt, salarium, agentum. Furthermore, with this ration, the Roman soldiers had their initial encounter of salad. What they would do, they would gather the leaves, the, the lettuce and the whatever leaves they use in their salad, and they will flavor it or dress it, if you will, with some salt. And they call it salad. So when you eat your salad this week, I hope you're doing that, you know. Hello? Hello, somebody? I just put on my doctor hat very quickly and take it off. I hope you're eating that. That is good stuff. You will remember... Sal, salt. So salt has a very long and important existence in human history. And we want to remind ourselves of what Jesus said about salt. I take you back to our scriptural meditation, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Jesus himself it's read in my Bible. The words of Jesus says, You are the? You are the what? So who, who is he talking to here? 
the same people he told Mate to Sate. Furthermore, to Mate to Sate, and I will make you fishers of men. The next thing is, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be good for seasoning? It is good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Salt. As we said just a while ago, the reality is, my dear friends, that salt serves a few purposes. One of which is to purify. Now, salt has been used for centuries, probably even millennia, to help in the purification and even healing process because the application of salt has some antiseptic or antimicrobial properties. It's still used today, if you will, if you have a sore throat. I have told many people that, especially when we had the COVID tent set up outside the emergency department and people came for their viral illness that wasn't serious. We had to dispatch with them. One of the guidelines you would give for the sore throat is gargle with warm salt water. It's a timeless home remedy that still finds great application today. And it is useful and it is scientifically proven to be effective. You gargle with the warm salt water and the salt coats the oral cavity and the oropharyngeal area. What it does is through the process of osmosis is it extracts some of that fluid that, that is part of the inflammatory process and coming along with that is some of the, the disease-causing agents, the pathogens. And when you gargle with it and you spit it out, you are expelling some of those pathogens. It is said also by those in the medical community that most of the bacteria in the mouth that are harmful, it is sensitive to salt. So salt really kills it. So even before then, before the advent of more modern and safer medical practices, when persons were wounded, what did they do? They pack salt into the wound. Have mercy. You ever try doing that? Have mercy. It is not a pleasant experience, I'll tell you that. It is not widely encouraged in modern medicine, for we have safer techniques. But what that would do, the salt with its antiseptic properties, the same uh, scientific principle of osmosis and all that will dehydrate the affected cells that have been infected and would promote healing. So salt has been used even in the Levitical system. God asked the Jews to apply salt to their burnt offerings. It has this, this, this symbol of purity. You apply the salt. Salt is used for purification and healing. Hello, somebody. Are you there? Are you there with the preacher today? Jesus says you are the salt of the earth. No, I don't know about you, but I have this strong, this strong, it's more than a feeling. I, 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 I submit it's grounded in fact. I, I believe as I watch what is happening around us today that the world is in need of some purification. I don't know if you have been paying attention, but even if you watch the news but once a week or you pick up a newspaper, maybe not so much for the younger ones, but you get the headlines on your phone, you would agree that the world is in need of some purification. 
the world is in need of some healing what do you say the world is in need of some application of that which has spiritual antiseptic properties if you please because the world is decaying the world is festering with evil the world is infested with sin and salt is needed Jesus says you and I we are the salt of the earth so you find the world is too impure, whose fault is it anyway? You find the world is putrid, where's the salt? Salt also preserves. Of course, with the advent of the beautiful large appliance called the refrigerator and the deep freeze, we don't use salt in that application that much again. You put your stuff in the fridge or the deep freeze or what have you for its preservation. But before the advent of these things, people would salt their stuff, particularly meats. I mean, they still have salted meats today, isn't that so? I would not advocate that you consume such. But it is historically that process of preservation, you apply the salt, the dehydration takes place, and that which remains can last for a longer time. There's a greater shelf life, if you will. Salt preserves. I want to let you know, in case you have forgotten, because I'm a little concerned, I have to admit. I really thought more people would remember what Mate Tusate was about. You know, I feel a little hurt. But anyway, so let me remind you, in case you have forgotten, Jesus said, you and I, we are the salt of the earth. So preservation is needed. Preservation of what, you may ask. I'm so glad you asked. Because God, through time, has instilled certain values, certain virtues, certain principles. He has taught men and women in various parts of the world, even those of other world religions apart from Christianity. There are certain consistent principles by which men lived. But these principles seem to be on the decline and in some parts of the world they seem to have vanished completely I'm talking about the principle that marriage is honorable hey yeah am I talking to somebody here marriage is honorable that that there's no shame in being married and staying married hello not just getting married you know but, but doing what? Staying married. It's a crying shame that the divorce statistics in our church is comparable with that of the world. That to me, you know, every time I think about that, I want to cry. Because that is astounding and unbelievable. Principles that men have lived by for many years. Hello? That it is God through nature that assigns you with your sex, your gender. Yes. When you are born and the doctor says congratulations as a boy or a girl, the doctor never says congratulations, you have a human being. Next two, three years, he will choose, she will choose what she will, or he will be it, shim, him, what is him, and all kind of nonsense. God assigns the sex at birth. Nobody has to choose that for you. What nonsense is this? The child will choose. Child will choose. When the child is born, 
You don't, let me use some language as one of my evangelists used some time, some time ago, I heard him. You don't have to look at the buttocks, you look at the front tucks, have mercy. And when you look there, you will know if it's a boy or a girl. We need salt to preserve these common sense values in the society. Nonsense, these learned people. Best they burn their PhD certificates. Or the utter rubbish they are talking. But the child will decide. It has been decided. We need salt to preserve the value of respect for property and human life. People no longer respect that. It's nothing to take a man's life now. That's like mashing an ant. No respect. Where is the salt? God is saying, I need some things to be preserved. The world is decaying, my friends. The world is putrefying. The world is stinking. And God says, you are the salt. What have you been doing? I need an agent of preservation. And I need it now. I need it desperately. Because the, the, the rate of decay is exponentially increasing. My dear friends, I'm sure you know, if you don't know about those first two functions of salt, of course, we're talking about table salt here for the chemist, sodium chloride, not any of the other salts. Salt is best known as a flavoring agent. Am I talking the truth here? Yes. And I'm sure we have all eaten food where we know if there's salt in it. Hello. Come on, be real with the preacher this morning. Yeah. You taste that and you say, hey, like they kidnapped the salt shaker in this house, boy. Have mercy. Huh? Conversely, we have eaten food where there is too much. So salt, we always know when salt is present or absent in what we eat. Am, am, I, am I making sense today? Yes. We know where, when salt is present or absent. And salt is one of the most widely used additives to all that we eat. Well, I almost said and drink, but not so much that way. All that we eat, in moderation, of course, salt is added. And I submit to you, my dear friends, that today the world is lacking salt. It's, it is insipid. It is tasteless. It is lacking the flavors that God placed there when he created, when he said, let there be man. And he gave man a certain, you know, a some certain functions. He gave man some things to do. He, he asked man to, to, to have dominion and take care of this earth and to behave himself a certain way. The world is lacking that flavor. The world has become tasteless, unpalatable, unpleasant to live in. But the problem is, where is the salt? Where is the salt? Whose fault is it anyway that the food has no taste? That the world has no taste? The salt is missing. In the interest of time, allow me to tell you a couple other things. Jesus said, of course, that if the salt has lost its flavor, I mean, what good is it? I always wonder about, wondered about that, I must let you know, until, well, Abigail and I can let you know. Sometime we had some salt, not salt we usually cook with. I think we had bought it 
put in ice for ice cream or something like that. And um, it was just left open on the counter because it's not the type of salt we use for cooking. And sometimes some months went by, and I think the salt we usually use had run out. And we said, hey, let me see what's going on with this salt. And when we checked it, it was like, wait, this is salt? The thing, I was shocked. I didn't know that could actually happen. The salt had lost its saltiness. I said, wait, no. boy, Jesus, he was right on the money here, boy. This good for nothing salt, that we fling that in the garbage one time because it serves no purpose. What purpose is there to have salt, almost say in the congregation, in the shaker, huh? and the salt has lost its saltiness. Jesus say, pelt with that salt. That's what they used to do literally in that time. Anytime there was good for nothing salt, they would toss it on the roadway. And men walking on that, camels walking on that, donkey walking on that, all kind of thing walking on that. Because it is good for nothing salt. Do we have any kind of salt like that in the church? Anyway, carrying on, continuing. Salt, I want to let you know, my dear friends. Salt accomplishes its purpose, its primary purpose. Not by mingling with other grains of salt. Oh, no. Now listen to the preacher here. I'm going somewhere. Let me rewind and press play. Salt does not accomplish its primary purpose as a flavoring agent by mingling with other grains of salt in the salt shaker. Hello, somebody? Anybody home <laughs> to borrow someone's phraseology? Salt accomplices, accomplishes its purpose as a flavoring agent by leaving the salt shaker and mixing and mingling with that which is not yet salt, or which is not salt at all, I should say. That is where salt realizes its purpose. When all the salt particles jumping up in the shake and, you know, praising that we are all salt here, what is that doing? Serving no purpose. Salt has to mix and mingle. Hello, somebody. Salt has to be applied to that which is not salt to impart its flavor. And therein the salt finds its usefulness. Let me bring it home to somebody who is still, you know, the wheels are turning too slowly. Let me speed up the wheels there for you. Uh, I'm saying, my dear friends, it is high time that we stop tickling ourselves here on the pews and, and feeling good about ourselves that we have come to church and we had a good time praising the Lord and we heard a word from the Lord and we don't want to go out there and mix and mingle with the rotting society to impart the salt from the Lord. We have to exit the salt shaker. Go out there. The society right here, the community right around in Mongdo is in need of salt. And we are here. Yeah, we have to be here sometimes. Uh, uh, but, but there are those who have challenges every time we say to go out. A battery of excuses come to the fore of your mind. Hey, the sun hot over there, you know. The sun will be hot when you're going to work every day. The, the sun will be hot when you're in the savannah playing. The sun will be hot when you go to the beach. How come all of a sudden the sun hot when it's time to witness for Jesus? I go sweat. Sweat for Jesus! Jesus sweat, sweated great drops of blood in Gethsemane. Blood gushed down. His forehead, his back was ripped, ribbons of flesh hanging out. And you studying about you go sweat? Come on, man. 
come better than that. This is serious business. The society is rotting. It is putrid and insipid in need of salt. And salt is refusing to mix. Jesus says, wait. You stay there. I have something coming for you. I have a place to throw you to be trodden. Because you are a waste of time calling yourself salt and doing nothing to fulfill the purpose as salt. Now, there are some who have a concern that appears to be legitimate at face value. They say, preacher man, I am afraid to venture into those parts because it may be that I will be influenced the wrong way. That as I mix and mingle with them, their behaviors will rub off on me. And I will leave the church and enter into the world. Well, press pause there. Let me ask you a question. When is the last time, when is the last time you ever applied salt to food? And the salt took on the flavor of the food. That sounds profound, eh? but it's a simple question. Ponder it. When last you applied salt to a stew or something you're cooking, and you, you taste it and you say, Way, the salt tastes like stew, boy. Anybody ever had that experience? Oh, good. We are all seeing people here. The reality is, whatever salt mixes with and mingles with, takes on, come on somebody, takes on the flavor of the salt. The converse does not apply. Salt never takes on the flavor of the food. The food, whatever salt mixes with, always takes on the flavor of the salt. That is why Jesus said, you are the salt. You think, you think Jesus has just come up with these statements flippantly? He knows what he is saying. It is he who created salt. He knows the properties of salt, the strength of salt, the integrity of salt, the power of salt. So don't be afraid to mix and mingle. You mix and mingle, and we will know if he is truly salt. That I feel that is what the problem is, you know. I don't know. Some people, uh, I don't know, you must be baking powder or something. Huh? But if you're truly salt, nobody could unsalt you. You will salt them. <laughs> And when you mix and mingle with them, they will be rubbed, you will rub off the Christian values and virtues upon them. They will be infused by your saltiness and they will know what you are about. That's why he said you are salt. And that's why my friend, my friends, one of my favorite passages, I want to read it for you from the writings of Ellen White is this, one of my favorite. It was drummed in our heads as ministerial students by a past president of this conference who was a lecturer at that time, Pastor Errol Mitchell. He said time and again in the class, Christian Witnessing. I read to you from Ministry of Healing 143. Christ's method alone Christ's method what? Now if you say alone, what that means? It have other options? No, it means that is the only way. Not so? Yeah, well that is what my English teacher to, to, taught me. Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. So we know Mate Tusate. Our primary goal is to make disciples, to reach people. Well, Jesus gave us the way to do it too. Isn't that a good commander? Yeah, that's proper leadership. Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. 
The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. What he did? He did what? Ah. That is step one in being successful as a fisher of, man, of men. That's why he said you are salt. Because the first thing you have to do is mingle, mix with people, but not aimlessly, not without purpose. But the, how did he do it? He mingled with men as one who desired their good. He didn't mingle with them to talk about, hey, you like that soca or what? Eh? Or, or other frivolous things. He mingled with them as one who desired their good. He showed sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, won their confidence. Then, and only then, he bade them follow me. You know why we don't have great success as a church? We're trying to tinker with, tamper with Christ's method. Because we're too lazy. Huh? You want to jump out there and say, follow me, follow me. Come to this church. We have thing going on. Come, get baptized. That time you ain't mingle with the people. You don't know their name, their, even their initials, nothing. Mingle with them. As one who desires their good. Show sympathy. Meet them. Understand what is going on in their lives. This is a foolproof method. You know. I have seen it work. Show sympathy. Minister to their needs. Then they will, you will win their confidence. You know how to tell them be confident. It's a natural human outflow. It's a psychology in it. But you're being genuine. You're not just doing it for the psychology. People know when you're genuine in the 21st century. They, you will win their confidence. And then when you say, hey, you know, I love Jesus. I follow him. This is the way I live that brings me great joy in life. I want to recommend it to you. They will say, eh, uh -huh, that sounds good, boy. If, if this Jesus could make you to be this kind of person. I want to follow that Jesus too. Christ's method alone. So my dear friends, that's about salt. And I want to let you know finally about salt that all people need salt. You know, sometimes we believe there are some who are rich and endowed and they have fat bank accounts and driving nice vehicles and have many homes and houses. They may need salt. I want to submit to you they need salt. Everybody needs salt. You think when they're cooking, they don't put salt in their food because they're rich? Every home uses salt. Salt is ubiquitous. And in the same way as it is in the physical realm, so is it in the spiritual. Everyone needs salt. There's no restriction. That's why the command, if you recall, Matthew 2, Sate, make disciples of Panta ethne, of every people group. That is the great commission in Matthew 20 that we explored last month. But much has been said. Let's go on. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill can't be hidden. You know, if you have ever had the privilege to fly into Trinidad at night, you see all the lights on the hills of Lavantil. One of the first things you see there. Whatever is on a hill and is lit cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket. But when you light a lamp in that time, of course, you would literally light it, a flame. You put it up on a stand that its light would be far-reaching. It gives light to all who are in the house. In that same way, says Jesus, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Now, who here 
turns on the switch in your home and as the light is coming on you take something and you throw it over the light bulb anybody does that right i have to keep my sentence referrals in its place today nobody does that sort of thing that is clear psychotic behavior when you flip the switch you want the light to shine isn't that so yeah i submit to you that light is important for sight without light there will be no sight these photoreceptors at the back of your eye it is light they work by right that's why you don't see in the dark as far as i know at least so light is important for vision and the bible says without vision day people perish so light is important i want to let you know my dear friends that just as jesus said you are the soul there's a reason he said you are the light because light is never afraid of darkness i want to repeat that a couple of times because the conversations I hear, I sometimes wonder if that is true. Light is never afraid of darkness. You know why? Where, wherever light turns up, darkness is dispelled. Darkness holds nothing over light. When light arrives, darkness can do anything but flee. Isn't that so? That's just the way it is. That's why Jesus said, you are the light. Because he knew that this world is in darkness. As Jeremiah said, gross darkness of mercy. And you are the light. Light, the problem I, in our society, I, I submit to you humbly is not so much the prevalence of darkness the problem in our society is the refusal of the light to shine can i say that one more time i i humbly submit to you this morning as we tie up this message whose fault is it anyway i submit to you that the problem in Trinidad and Tobago is not so much the darkness that is pervasive and prevailing. The problem is the light we have not shining. If you can say amen, I know this church familiar with that. You could say what? Correct is right. Mm-hmm. So wherever we, dark, wherever we are as light, darkness will be put in check. There are far too many undercover Christians hiding their lights when they go to work, when they're in school. Hello? When you're in school, Nobody knows you are Seventh-day Adventist Christian. What are you doing with your light? Hiding it! Your neighborhood. No one knows that you are Seventh-day Adventist. Undercover Christians. Hiding your light. That's what Jesus was talking about here. He says that behavior is insanity. No one lights a lamp and then covers it. That is total psychosis. So I submit to you, you do the extrapolation. If that's what you're doing, then it means you. All right. There are far too many Christians I have come across not shining their light. And they are the most vocal and vociferous to complain about the darkness in the society. See this crime? Look at the next one. Eh? 
These people have no respect. Well, that is true. Darkness will do what it has to do. But you are the light. What are you doing? Nothing. Well, shut up. Don't complain about the darkness. If you're not letting your light shine, keep quiet. Huh? You have no shame. If you are the light and you're not shining, don't complain about the darkness at all. Because you are a contributor. There's some hard sayings as Jesus said. If you want to write Pastor Moses after the sermon, you have my full permission. But I will show him the tape. Thus said the Lord, my boss, Jesus Christ. You are the light of the world. You know, there was one day when I was still in secondary school, late secondary school, that I was home. I think it was vacation time. And before they had 107.1, the word, and Isaac 98.1, and Sky 99.5 FM. They had no Christian, consistent Christian station on the FM band. And I 95.5 started a program they call the Perfect Ten. Ten hours of gospel in the night. Ten hours straight. And I was home there in the day, and the radio was on, and I heard people calling and complaining where they had this gospel thing in the night, where they change up the thing, man, and a righteous indignation hit me, poops. And I say, what nonsense is this? I pick up the telephone one time, I call into the radio station. I said, I want to submit to these people who are complaining about the gospel. Are these not the same people who are talking about crime and crime? Man, and, and, and because of the context of the secular population, I jammed them with a little piece of rash or TI, if you please. Hey, I hope you delete this from the, the tape. Eh? Huh? I say the man say, you push the creator out. And then do ball. That is what all you want in Trinidad. Huh? Don't complain. You don't want God and then you want to complain. Shut up. I didn't say it that way, of course. After that, no, but no man make a complaint on the radio again. I'm telling you, my friends, when you are the light, people must know darkness must submit to the light. We have a set of talkers and nobody is doing anything. I want to let you know as we close that this light that we have is not from Tiantec. Praise God. This light we have, is, it, it, it derives its power from an inexhaustible power supply. We are depending on Tiantec. Huh? Our power. Come on, man. When we plug into Jesus, nothing putting out this light. Jesus said, I am the light. And he is the real light. What we're doing is connecting with him and reflecting his light into the lives of others. Much like the moon, we have no inherent light in ourselves. We are dark. That's how we have been constructed in this sinful world. Genetically, every way, we are naturally in the natural carnal man. It's darkness. But when we meet Jesus, come on somebody. I say when we meet Jesus and we plug into him, huh? we plug into him there, we get access to that light and we reflect his light into the lives of others. Praise be to God. And that's why Jesus said when you start to do that, they will see the good works. But it's not you to get the glory. Hey, hello? Anybody there? It's not you to get the glory. They will glorify who? Your Father in heaven. Because you are not the source of the light. They have to glorify the source. Don't get tied up, you know. Huh? As much as you could preach and sing and do whatever and meet people, I don't get tired up with that at all. I know the source is God. So let them see and glorify God who is in heaven. The final thing I will tell you is this. 
There are some people don't like light. That shouldn't be news to you. Jesus said that. Yeah, he tell us that straight up in the beginning. He said the light came into the world. And the world didn't want this light. They want darkness. That's what they want here. In Trinidad and Tobago, they like darkness. And then they want to complain. They like it so. Darkness. So it will not always be favorable and convenient to shine your light. Are you listening to the preacher today? I'm saying to you straightly, it will not always be favorable, young people, when you're in school. It will not be favorable all the time to shine your light. People go watch your hole. That is okay. Shine it anyway. In Jesus' name. You are the light of the world, says Jesus, our commander-in-chief. Jesus said men prefer darkness rather than light. That is what they want. But once you are determined to shine for Jesus, nobody could put out your light. Because they have no vested interest or can they tamper with the power source. Yes. So let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. You know, there was a song I learned in Sabbath school growing up, brighten the corner where you are. Yeah. There's so much darkness out there. Don't get intimidated. You just shine the light where you are. It may not reach up my lot, but shine it where you are. It's going to brighten there. And that's what you can do. And if more of us take off the bushel, hey, take off the basket, let the light shine, there would be more light in Trinidad and Tobago. So whose fault is it anyway? Is it the darkness? Or the refusal of the light to shine. My dear friends, don't hide your light to make somebody else happy. If you're ugly, bear with this illustration here. Now, I'm not talking about any of you. You, know. you have good looking people in Mongdo. Hello? Yes. But if you're ugly, you would want to be in darkness. You don't want no light at all. Because the more light shed on you, pressure. There are some people in their ugliness, the ugliness of sin, they don't like light. Because when light comes, they are shown up for who they are. You don't worry about that, shine it anyway. Shine, let it shine. Don't let anybody stop you from letting your light shine. A story is told of a young girl named Mary. Back in the days before they had modern lighthouses, her dad was in charge of one of a, a critical lighthouse in an area that was very rocky off the coast. Many ships, trading ships, were traversed there, and it was his job to light. Now, that time, it had no electric light, you know. They had to light the flame. The flambeau all around the top of the lighthouse so that the coming ships will know to avoid, they will see the treacherous rocks. One day, a group of bandits, they, they were accustomed, their way of thinking was that if the ships don't see the light, they will run aground. And then we will run to them and pilfer everything they have. So they kidnapped the lighthouse keeper when he left to come back. He left his daughter in the lighthouse, Mary. He said, I'm going to come back. Don't worry, you know I'll come back in time to light the lighthouse. They kidnapped him, they tied him up, they threw him in a shed and locked the door. And they say, yes, tonight is the night. They knew that many trading ships were passing that night. They said they will see no light. They will run aground and we will deal with them. But Mary, after she got over her concern, where is daddy? She understood as she saw the men what their plan was. She was too short to reach the lamps at the top 
of the lighthouse. But she was determined. She got a table. First she got a ladder. It was too short. She got a table. She put the ladder on the table. It was too short. Then she found a book that she would place under the ladder to give it some height. And finally she was able to light the wicks of the lighthouse. That evening, many ships were saved from meeting their doom. All because of the light. My friends, the world is in darkness. You cannot be comfortable coming here all the time and not letting your light shine. Jesus said, as you know that song in Sabbath school, let it shine Sunday, Monday. We don't let our light shine on Sabbath alone. This is an everyday experience. If you're not doing that, talk to the boss. He will reconnect you. And you don't even have to pay a reconnection fee. Praise God. Hello? Praise the Lord. He will reconnect you. And you will shine brightly. Friends, today, I don't know if you're happy as I am and excited as I am that Jesus has issued us this challenge. He says, you are the salt. That is a tall order. And then he adds to that and he says, in addition, you are the light too. The challenge has been issued. How will you respond? When you hear the news, ask yourself the question, whose fault is it anyway? Am I operating as salt? Am I letting my light fully shine wherever I am? If not, then maybe it's your fault. Maybe it's mine. Let us pledge today by God's grace to do what he has asked of us. Is there someone today who is happy that we serve him who is the light of the world. If you're happy about that, man, shout aloud, amen. amen. Praise God. Is there someone who is saying today, Lord, by your grace, I pledge to remain connected. To remain connected. If you want to remain connected, raise both hands. Praise God. Praise God. Today, somebody is saying, Preacher, this is a serious word. I feel like I'm not yet connected, and I want to do something about that. I want you to pray for me. If you're not yet connected, you have been coming, you may have visited here time and again, you, you're not sure where you are, forget those around you. I invite you to stand. Just those who, you know, you want that, you want the boss to know, Lord, connect me today. I want to submit to you, praise God, that there are a couple of persons today that have spoken to the boss to be connected. They are going down in the watery grave to say, Jesus, Connect me up. I'm ready to be connected. I want to invite those, as you can remain standing, we'll pray for you all. But I want to invite those two sisters in a special way to come to the front. You have covenanted to walk with Jesus today. God bless you. Sister Pearl Bernard, she's coming. My other sister, he is known, and come to the front. Yeah, come along, sis. Oh, remain standing, please. Roshana, yes, there's you to whom I'm referring. 
praise the Lord. Amen. So these two sisters have said, let, I want my light to shine. And before we have the benediction, I hope many of you will stay on for the baptismal service. We want to present them as candidates to the church for examination. That as they answer, someone just share a mic with them, thank you, Brother Murray. That as they answer in the affirmative to these questions, you would be able to be led by God to vote them accordingly to be members of the church subject to their baptism. Just give us some power on the red mic, please. Check one, two. So, right, just come closer together. So we have one mic. Yes. You wanna? No. no. All right. So these are the questions. Let's go quickly. You will answer yes if the answer is yes. Do you believe there is one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons? Yes. Yes. Right. Give us some more power in the Check mic one, there. Two. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins and believe that God's grace through faith in his shed blood. By this grace, you are saved from sin and its penalty of death. Yes. Yes. Amen. Well, say amen, you know. It's a good time to say amen. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, believing that God in Christ has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart? And today, yes. do you renounce the sinful ways of the world? Yes, I do. Amen. Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Jesus as your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary and accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a long Christ-centered, loving Christ-centered life in your home and before the world? Yes. Amen. Yes, I do. Do you believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice? For the Christian. And do you covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? Yes. Amen. Yes, do. do you accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of God's character, a revelation of His will? And it, is it your desire by Christ, the power of Christ dwelling in you, to keep all His commands, including the fourth, which requires observance of the seventh day? of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and a memorial of creation? Yes. Yes, I do. Amen. Do you look forward to the coming of Jesus very soon when this mortal shall put on immortality as you prepare to meet the Lord? Will you be a witness to his loving salvation by using your own talents and efforts in winning other persons for him to be ready for his appearing? Amen. Do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the marks of this remnant church? Yes. Amen. Do you believe in church organization and do you purpose to support God and his church through the faithful giving of tithe and offerings and by your personal efforts and influence? Yes. Yes, I do. Amen. Do you believe your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And will you honor God by caring for it, avoiding the use of that which is harmful, abstaining from all unclean foods, as well as from the use, manufacture, or sale of alcoholic beverages, the use, manufacture, or sale of tobacco, and any of its forms for human consum consumption? And the misuse or trafficking in narcotics and other drugs? Yes. Yes, I do. Do you know and understand the other fundamental Bible principles taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you purpose by God's grace to live your life in harmony with these principles? Yes, I do. 
Yes, I do. Amen. Do you accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and desire to be baptized as a public expression of your faith in Jesus and in his forgiveness of your sins? Yes. Yes, I do. Amen. And finally, do you accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that every people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship? Do you desire to be a member of this local congregation of the world church? Yes. Yes, I do. Amen. Well, you have heard their desire. Is someone moving a motion that these two ladies, Pearl Bernard and Rishana Sadhu, be accepted into fellowship here, subject to their baptism? It's moved, it's moved. Is it seconded? It's seconded. I want you to turn around just much like what Brother Maury did. You're about to vote that we accept these two sisters into fellowship and membership here at Mongdo, the Seventh-day Adventist Church here at Mongdo, subject to their baptism. It's moved, it's seconded. All in favor? Praise the Lord. All oppose, any oppose, there's none oppose. So upon your baptism, my sisters, you will be full-fledged members of this church. May God bless you in your sojourn with Jesus. And those who stood when the benediction is uttered, we want to pray for you as well, that one day soon you will stand here and make that decision. You can have your seats as we bring this aspect to a close and proceed immediately thereafter to the baptism service. Okay, thanks once again, Pastor, for the stirring message that was brought to us this morning. And to conclude this part of the service, we will make use of hymn number 367, 367, Rescue the Perishing. Check one, two. Shall we stand or what? Father, we thank you once again for a powerful message from your man servant today, dear Lord. We have heard your call. We have heard that we are the salt of the earth. And it is our duty 
to remove ourselves from the salt shaker and to go out into the world and tell others of your love. May it be our desire, dear Lord, today to mingle with those around us in our community. There are those that are waiting to know more and more about your love. And it is our duty to not complain about their darkness, but to be as light and go out and shine our light so that others will know that there is a God above. So continue, dear Lord, to keep us safe. Protect us and guide us throughout the coming week. And when time shall be no more, may all of us be found ready to go home with you. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Right, so those who are constrained to leave, but the chorister will remain continuing to sing the songs of Zion right after the baptism service would be prayer and fast service. It's a park day. God bless you as you continue to fellowship. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine shine this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine this little light of mine i'm gonna let it shine let it shine 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 let it shine sing it one more time this little light of mine